Thanks for joining us for Village Vice. He is Zach Blackerby on the far left. I'm Brad Law in the middle. And there on the right is the far more talented guy whose initials are BL. Former Auburn running back Brad Lester is with us today on Village Vice. And uh, we are fired up about it. Brad, thanks for joining us and uh, welcome to the show. No, no problem. And uh, War Eagle, I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, you War Eagle, it. no question about it. Brad, this running game finally got going against Georgia. This Georgia defense, of all people. You as a former Auburn running back, when you started seeing Jarquez, Hunter, and Brian Batsy, and even Peyton Thorne get things going with their legs, what was your response? I mean, I, I, I called it all week, you know, uh, especially with, with someone with a defense, like the way they have their defense, no one's, they're not used to anybody trying to run the football on them. And, um, Let's just be honest. I mean, they're a great team, well coached. You know, Kirby does a great job with them. Um, but they, I mean, I just didn't feel like they were the same guys as they were last year and the year before. So I mean, I felt like we should have been able to run the ball just the way we did. And um, honestly, I think it's going to actually, you know, expose them to a couple more teams here in the future. What does it do, Brad, do you think, for Auburn? Do you think they found some? I mean, Jarquez had nine carries in the first half. His season high had been 11 in a game before Georgia, is this the beginning of more carries for the running backs and maybe even more of a commitment to to the running backs carrying the load offensively? Uh, you know, I don't want to speak much for the staff. I, 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 I honestly can't say because I, I haven't been able to figure it out yet because um, I'm used to our guys, you know, getting a, you know more carries than what, what they're getting right now. Um, you know, I think some of, I think a uh, few of them are still a little banged up. So I think maybe that may be some of the reasons why they're not getting as many carries. But um Hopefully in the future they they will get more because I think they've been productive on the ground. Robbie was productive on the ground. Yeah. Like even even Peyton was you know surprisingly productive on the ground as well. So yeah, I mean I, I think the writers on the wall for is you know the direction that you know the offense needs to go at least for the rest of this year, and that's trying to focus on keeping the ball on the ground and just only throwing the ball when we have to. You know, screen plays, uh, you know, short yard situations, and then once we get comfortable there, that's when you start going play action and taking your shots downfield. Brad, you talked about some of these guys being banged up, and it's not just the running back room. It seems like it's this entire team. A lot of injuries kind of happening towards the end of fall camp, which is arguably the worst time for them it is. to happen. You being a running back, which is the most physical position, I mean, you going into a bye week, how would you typically approach it, and what do you think this coaching staff is doing to kind of manage a lot of these guys who are banged up right now? If they know what I know, if so that because they they don't play again until next Saturday, right? right? I'm guessing what's today, Tuesday. So I'm guessing Sunday they didn't practice. Yesterday they didn't practice. Today they probably didn't practice. Uh, tomorrow should be a light, you know, a light, you know, walk through day. Thursday's another recovery day. Um, I'm, I'm pr pretty much every day this week, any day that they can get off this week, they need they need to have off and and, and maybe just have like a light practice on Saturday because. You got to think the SEC is different. You, mm -hmm. you know, you're playing. You're playing at least. If you think about it, you're playing at least five top twenty-five teams at some point in the year. Whereas, you know, any other conference, you're not going to get that. So, you know, the physicality and you know the beating that some of these players have to take all year is it, pretty tough. You know a thing or two about that, Brad. I, I go back and think about the era in which you played. <laughs> And I'm going to I'm going to name the running backs that were at Auburn, including you during your okay. time there, because your true freshman year was Cadillac and Ronnie. Yeah, which played... which are like like my big brothers. I, I mean, I learned a lot from those two. I yeah. Yep. You you also were here with Kenny Irons, Carl Stewart, Trey Smith, Mario Fannin, Ben oh, Tate. Running backs. Yeah, he was all and... right. <laughs> <laughs> And that's and that's an era with mm -hmm. Coach Tuberville where mm -hmm. it was run the ball, play defense. I mean, there are a lot of single-digit scoring games in that era. Talk a little bit about playing during that time and, and what it was like for you at Auburn. Tommy Tuberville, I mean, you know, people say what they want about him, you know, especially as a coach. I mean, he's probably one of the smartest, uh, best player coach that you're going to meet. I mean, like, he, I mean, it would be sometimes we're, we're about to run a play, and he'd be like, what do you guys want to run? I'm like, I, I, I love hearing that. I'm like, just run, let's just run 32 and 33 blasts. We, we're good all day. But, um, man, it, it's crazy. You know, the run game was, was, I mean, I felt like it was harder then than it was now because now with the spread, you're only getting six or seven players in the box. You know, mm. you know, back when I was playing, I don't think I ever saw less than seven players in the box ever because we had a tight end and a fullback in the game, which brought more people in there. But, um, 
I mean, there were so many times, 60 to 70% of the time, when we, when we went to the line of scrimmage, if we didn't see a play, you know, we didn't like, or if we wanted to change to something that we liked, we just tell them what it is. Like, we would come to the line, and if we, if we want to check the 32 blasts, we're checking the 32 blasts. If we want to run 33 zone, we tell them it's 33 zone. And um, I, I used to tell people all the time, there was nothing like getting four to five yards per carry, and they know it's coming, but you still can't stop it. Yeah. I mean, and that just mentally does something to a defense where – you know, you're up there checking your plays and, and doing what you want to do, and, and you're still successful on, on, on the run. I mean, it starts to mentally, you know, and physically, you know, wear the defense down once the third, fourth quarter gets here. Yeah. Um, and then there's, Brad, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of dummy calls, too. So, you like, we may come to the line and, and, you know, call a zone run, or we may call a 32 or 33 zone run, but anything for that week, if we tag a B or a C to the end of it, so let's say if we said 32 – 32 Brad, 32 Brad, or 32 Cat. That actually meant the opposite. So the whole game, they would hear us calling 32, 32, or 33. But we know if we call a play with that name, but with a B or C at the end of it, it's the opposite. So you'll see the whole defense go one way because they've heard us call that play all game. And then we're going the complete opposite way because, you know, they're, they're, they're not, you know, really listening to what's going on. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Uh, Brad, we just listed all those running backs that you played with. We talked about this a little bit in the offseason going into the year. Is Ben Tate the most <laughs> underappreciated running back in Auburn history? Uh, I got to answer this politically correctly. Uh, <laughs> no, you don't. You don't have to. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it is what it is. You look at the stats and the yards per carry outside of the year you got when I was on, and you get what you got. Yeah. Gotcha. So, Gotcha. <laughs> is uh, <laughs> got it. Is is there a game, Brad? Uh, I mean, I look back and I see, you know, like game three of your red shirt freshman year, you had a couple of rush touchdowns and a kick return touchdown. You could do it in the running game, the receiving game, and the kick return game. You had a couple of big runs in Auburn's last win at Georgia. You had 17 carries in the Florida game in 06. So it's one of the wildest atmospheres at Jordan Hare Stadium. And then I see, you know, 20 carries plus three different times in 07, including a career high 98 yards against Alabama in, in Auburn's last win during that six in a row streak. So maybe it's one of those. Maybe it's one that I didn't mention. Is there one game or one moment that stands out about your Auburn career? That Florida game, because um, that, that week, uh, you know, obviously we had people forget the week before that we were number two in the country. And we had lost to Arkansas. And so, uh, you know, that kind of took us out, out, out of, you know, they didn't have the playoffs back then. So if you, if you didn't finish undefeated in, in, in your uh, conference, you probably wasn't going to the national championship. So that loss kind of, you know, mentally messed with us a little bit. But um, we knew we had a chance to kind of regain momentum by taking a championship away from Florida that next week. Um, and we thought we thought beating it was going to knock them out of it. But um they ended up going to play the national championship that 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 you know a uh, couple weeks later. But that game was big for me because Kenny was really the guy that year. You know, I, I mean, that's one of the guys. You know, I'm a you know I'm a very honest person. I, I used to run so hard and, and do so well in pass protection because I know that was the only way I was gonna get on the field because Ken, Kenny Irons was such a great running back. If I wasn't doing something something else that you know that was kind of close to you know the level he was on, I wasn't gonna be on the field. But that particular week, he was hurt. And I never forget him, you know, he's telling me, he was like, hey, man, I, I need you to take over this week. And, you know, I feel like that's how that's how backfield should run, man. You should have that brotherhood to where, I mean, some weeks, you, you know, he's going to be the guy, some weeks I'm going to be the guy. And, and, you know, knowing your body, and he knew his body was a little banged up that week. So he would get, like, two carries or one carry, and he would tell me, hey, come in, like, you know, go the next two or three drives. You know, that's just the kind of, you know, relationship we had. But that was the first game that year, you know, I really got the carries that I wanted. And, um, you know, just being able to work together and, and, and beat a team like Florida with all the talent they had, you know, that, 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 game, that, that game stood out to me a lot. Do you feel this closeness with this current running back group? You're, you're close to Jarquez Hunter and Jeremiah Cobb, and Damari Austin seems like a great locker room guy as well, Man, and Brian Batty. Yeah. Demari, uh, I know Demari, Demari and Jarquez, they talk all the time. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I tell them, because, you know, I work with a lot of running backs from other schools too. And, um, you know, I tell him, I said, man, it's, it's important, you know, you, you, I hate to say backup. I always, I always like to use the word rotate or share, the guy you're sharing the backfield with. Sure. You got you to gotta build a bond and, and you know, y'all got to be on the same page. You know, if you two are back there and, and 
you know, there's no love for each other and y'all 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 aren't like brothers, it's probably not going probably not gonna mesh that well. But um, I mean now Jacquez and Damari, you know, I they're they're really close to me and they, they speak they both speak high on each other. Um I ain't got to, I haven't got to know Brian as much. You know, I talked to him a little bit, but not as much. So I don't I don't know as you know, as well as the, those other two guys. Um and I think Jeremiah's gonna be huge for us too. You know, mm-hmm. the, the biggest thing I saw with him, and you know, it's the small things that I always notice. I feel like he's our best pass protector. You know, I, I saw mm-hmm. him come in as a, um, freshman. The, as a freshman at first, and that's that says a lot because yeah. that was the hardest thing for me to pick up was you know, even not even just making the block, it was it was even recognizing who I had to pick up and who I had to block because you gotta think as a high school running back, if you're dominant you're not really pass protecting. So, if, you know, hats off for him to be able to come right in and um, be able to pass protect the way he is. You know, he runs the ball hard. Uh, you know, it, it's a crowded backfield. So I feel like, you know, we really could go any direction if any of these guys got hurt. What's it like for you, Brad, on a Sunday to watch guys like Tank and some of the other running backs <laughs> now doing their thing in the NFL? It's, it's actually funny. I have uh, the ESPN alert set up. So, like, whenever one of them score, because I, I think right now I've got uh, – 11 NFL running backs right now. So, wow. you know, I, 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 all Sunday I'm sitting there with the alerts. Saturday's even worse. I got, I got even, uh, even more college running backs that I work with. So I'm sitting there, you know, especially, you know, if, if I'm at the game with my girl, she's like, you're, you're on your phone on the app the whole time. You're not even watching the game. I was like, I got, I got like 30 ga- 20 games I got to keep up with at one time. So, I mean, it's a great feeling, you know, especially with most of my guys being running backs. Yeah. Um, you know, so I mean, it is what it is. I feel like sometimes I get to live through them, you know. <laughs> so, you know, that, that see their accomplishments and see how hard they worked. And, you know, all of them go through stuff. Some of them have been battle tested and, and, you know, have had some other things they had to deal with, whether it be family or off the field issues. And, you know, just to see, you know, a lot of these players deal with what they deal with and then, you know, come back and have a successful year. And it, 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 that, that, that's what gives me the most joy, man, is seeing a player, you know, yeah. fight through adversity and then, you know, Fans kind of, you know, oh, he's not that good, you know, this, that, and that. But my thing is, if you're if you're playing football at that level, you're obviously good. I mean, so, but yeah. but a lot of these fans don't realize, you know, being negative and talking down on a player, I mean, it, it kind of messes with those guys. So to see mm-hmm. some of these players go through what they they've been through, and you know, bounce back and have great years, has been been pretty good. You know, right right now. So I, I'm gonna be honest, like the running back from Alabama, Jason McQuillan, you know, people were giving him giving him a hard time the last couple of weeks. But he, he just wasn't getting the carries that, you know, he needed to get. So this past the, two weeks ago, he finally got his 16 or 17 carries he needed and ran for 130 yards against Ole Miss, who just beat LSU last week. So, you know, things like that, you know, when, you know, fans are kind of hard on the players, Heck, even their quarterback. You know, I know this is all we're talking about Auburn football, but Alabama's quarterback, he had a rough two weeks. Fan, the fans are calling for his head. They benched him. Then he comes right back out the next week and does does an amazing job. So it's things like that I love to see for players, man. Because you know it's it's, hard, it's harder than it, the mental part of it is a lot harder than 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 these fans know. Yeah, and, and I'm sure it's even tougher now than when you played because social media, social media. is so much more Whew. prevalent. Is, is that part of what you coach guys, or, or do you try to keep it solely on the field stuff? No, no. So that's 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 the big. So you know, I'm not not an agent, but you know, I'll, I'll help them. You know, force advising them on. You know yeah. who they should work with, marketing wise, agent wise, um, off the field decisions, endorsements. I, I'm I'm doing it all now, but social media is different, man. If if I'm tell you right now, if we had Twitter, because I think it just came around when I was in school. If we had yeah. Twitter when when I was playing. I, my running back coach would be cussing me out every week because then I'll see these fans talking trash, and I'm gonna have something back to say. I'm like, hey, you you want to line up? Come on out here at practice today, three thirty. I'll get you some pass. <laughs> so I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, man. A lot, of, a lot of people on social media that's talking trash. And again, I'm just a straight shooter. With it, they they're either talking trash from a fake page, or they or they either never played the sport before. So I tell these players yeah. all the time. I say, man, just I mean, you know who you are. You know you can play ball. You you wouldn't be at a, a top tier school if you couldn't play football. So yeah. you know, to hey, to to much is given, much is required. So the more success you get, the, the more hate you're gonna get. Unfortunately, so sure. Well, look, we uh, we have really enjoyed this, Brad. We know that you you played the game. You're working with some of these guys. You know what it takes day in, day out uh, to produce at the highest levels in the SEC. And you do tell it like it is. And uh, and so we I appreciate that. Yeah, very, very much. And I uh, hope we can talk to you again sometime soon. Definitely. Just let me know.
Awesome. You got it. Right. That is Brad War Lester. War Eagle to you, Brad. Thank you so much for your time and a ton of good insight. All right. Want to tell you about our friends at mybookie.ag. They are running a special right now for you to get in on the action for Village Vice listeners. Just use promo code next round and they'll give you a nice deposit bonus. Of course, it's free to make your account at mybookie.ag. But when you go to make that deposit, use promo code next round to get a little extra cheddar, a little extra love from our friends and my bookie, the line I'm watching this week, Brad, yes, is LSU, LSU minus six and a half against Missouri. That game yeah. is fascinating to me. I think that line's going to move a good bit this week. Mm. We're recording Tuesday morning, so you know by the time this goes up on Wednesday, that may have already changed. So that that's the one I'm watching right now. So okay. head over to mybookie.ag, get in on the action. What is the? Uh, you may not have it in front of you. I may have to look it up myself. The Texas A&M Alabama line, because I'll tell you, A&M has looked pretty good. I think it was three. I looked earlier in the week, and I think it was three. Alabama it, minus it's, it's three. two and a half. It's Alabama minus two and a half now. Okay, so it's already moved a little bit. I think so. If it was, I could, I could be wrong on that. So. Very interesting. You know who's going to have something to say about it, possibly later on in the week? Could be Lance's lock. Yeah, probably could. so. Lance may have something to say about that. Listen, football's here. You need plays. Go to lanceslock.com. Now's the time. Don't wait. You've heard us talk about it for weeks and weeks and weeks, and you're almost ready to, to pull the trigger. Well, now's the time. Get the best price on the monthly packages or the annual packages. Uh, sign up today and get that best deal at lanceslock.com. All right, Brad. Great stuff from Brad. <laughs> Guys. Brad squared. Guys with the initials BL typically deliver. All right, uh, just, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Brad Law, Brad Lester. What's the difference? No clue. Sure. It's it, it's stat time. Are you ready for stat time? I love stat time. All right. So this stat, I found this after we recorded stat time last week, and I'm like, dang it! I hope this stat continues to be the case, so we can talk about it this week. And it is wonderful. Peyton Thorne is the only starting SEC quarterback, so a minimum of 25 snaps. To not throw away a pass. Ooh. Robbie's thrown away two. Okay. For well, context. I don't, I don't like that stat. <laughs> I hate it. That's that's a bad Which explains stat. all the sacks, right? Yeah. Right. Well, it explains some of them. Yeah. I mean, it 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 explains some of them. Yeah. I mean, if there's you drop a, it twenty percent, it's a major difference right. on the ball game. Yeah, there's half a dozen to ten that you could probably have thrown away. Yeah, no question. Yeah. That's yeah. wild. So so no, your eyes don't deceive you. It's not that he's rarely doing it, he's literally never doing it. Yeah. So for the Peyton holding on to the ball too long crowd. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Throw it away. I thought that was crazy. That is wild. That was I, crazy. I wouldn't have thought it was zero. I wouldn't have thought zero. And then Robbie's done it twice, so they're coaching him to do it, yeah. right? It's not like they're saying, don't do that. So, all right. Thought that I, was I, interesting. Do, I do, Zach, think there is such an emphasis on not turning the ball over that Peyton may be making the snap decision to cover up and protect the ball yeah. and lose some yards as opposed to even throwing up a risky, but when he's not out of the pocket. Um, so, I, but I don't know, man. That's... Zero is zero zero. That's how much like zero not is. one, especially when he's moved around in the pocket some too. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Man. And look, his completion percentage is over 60%. But mm -hmm. like from an eye test standpoint, there's still a lot of doubters, which I get. I totally get. Yeah. Um, and so like getting sacked more is gonna and not throwing the ball away does help that completion percentage. So once again, these yeah. stats don't tell a full story, but it's still fun to discuss. Yep. Gunner Britton has not allowed a sack in his 149 pass snaps played. Didn't we have Dylan Wade earlier in the year, too, with, with a similar stat that he hadn't yeah, allowed he's, a pressure? Yeah, he's, he's allowed one sack. Yeah. Now. So yeah. so Dylan Wade and Gunnar Britton together as a combo are at one allowed through five games. That's correct. That's dynamic. That's, That's excellent. Correct. That is identifying needs in the portal and hitting. Not every portal get is a portal hit. Mm -hmm. But these two guys have so far done the job. Yep. Cam Stutz has allowed four, according to Pro Football Focus. Hmm. So take that for what it's worth. But he's mauling guys in a running game. Mm -hmm. He's important. Yeah. And he's a leader. I think he's you know he's bigger oh, than that, that too. So. Without question, yeah. 
Jalen Simpson's assignment and coverage has been targeted 12 times. He's allowed just six catches for just 32 yards. And think oh. about this for a second. He's a safety. He's lined up far away from the ball, and yet he's been targeted 12 times, just 30-something yards allowed. Yeah. And then he also has four picks. Like, that's crazy. So of the 12 times he's been targeted, four of them are picks. Yeah. And then, I mean, that's just wild. One out of every three times the quarterback goes in his direction. <laughs> it's unbelievable. He's snatching the, the ball. start. I mean, he, he he's yeah. off to an incredible start to the season. I saw, I think it was a pro football focus graphic on uh, X yesterday that, see, I'm trying to be good and current and call it X instead of Twitter. Don't um, do it. Resist. <laughs> that the QBR against Jalen Simpson is like 16 or something crazy low like that that's wild so yeah further further evidence further numbers to back up the fact that jalen simpson's that guy man what a great year yeah i mean he's been he's been unbelievable i'm trying to i'm trying to find that real quick yeah, yeah it's 16.7 there you go 16.7 and then <laughs> um DJ James is 44, which is still dang good. Yeah. Uh, all right, my last one. My last stat of stat time of okay. the week. Jane Hooks has been targeted five times in short passes, so one to ten yards downfield. Okay. He's only caught one of those. Also, of those five targets, one of them resulted in an interception. So throwing to Shane Hooks short has gone to the other team yeah. just as much as it's gone to Shane Hooks. So were the pass against Cal and the one against Samford in the end zone, were those are those in that category? One to ten yards? I don't remember off the top of my head. The the pick against Cal was one. Okay. That was the interception. So that was a little bit high, but he got his hands on it. I don't think the Samford like one, it. I don't think that was within ten yards. Okay. I'm not positive. I'm checking. Uh they were no, I, it may have been, Zach. They were third and goal, I thought. Okay. Yeah, because yes, they were because they started first and goal at the one. They got a five yard penalty, and so it was third and goal at the six. Oh, so that's the pick then. It's so not that the cow. Would be it. Yeah, okay. the cow was a little further downfield. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I mean you got to fifty fifty balls right now. It's a little under fifty fifty. And could it be ball placement from the quarterback? Maybe, but if it's a fifty fifty ball, you need to get fifty percent of them, and. Camden Brown got a reception in the Georgia game, and you're, you're still waiting, right? You're still waiting on somebody from that camp of bigger receivers mm -hmm. to, to really step up and take over the mantle as, as the go-to guy in a possession-type situation. Because teams are going to be on Rivaldo Fairweather, and they're going to try to start to, to scheme to shut him down in those goal-to-go type situations. Yeah. So you need another big receiver to go up there and get a 50-50 ball. Yep. Yep. All right. So that's this week's uh, stat time. If you want to sponsor stat time, please reach out to us. We are effortlessly looking for a partner with stat time. But yeah, Brad, overall thoughts on any of those things or just kind of uh, anything you want to recap from the Brad Lester interview? I think it says a lot that he really likes the dynamic in the locker room, the dynamic in the running yep. back room, that these are some unselfish guys. They are for the team. They're for each other yep. and not just about getting their carries. And he knows he's got personal experience with almost all of them. So yep. I think that says a lot. And as for the stats, look, you're not yet halfway through the season. There's still stuff you're trying to work on and get mm -hmm. better at and identify what guys can do and can't do in real game situations. So right. – you know, still a little work in progress, as is probably to be expected. Brad, I think that just about does it for today's show. It does. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And remember, everyone has vices. Make sure Village Vice is one of yours. Yeah.